Hi, I'm Mrs. Brown from Poly Mill Elementary. This year I teach fifth grade and I'm so excited to share with you a book called Dream Builder. It's a story of an architect um, named Philip Freelon. Uh, author of this book is Kelly Starling Lyons. And I want to share a little bit about, I looked her up and I want to share a little bit about um, what I found out about her. She is amazing. This is Kelly. She has written uh, 28 books and you can see here some of the other books that she has written. There are so many. All right, so I'm gonna start the book. Um, here it is, Dream Builder. Okay, Dream Builder. Vision and fill Freelon's world, art breathes dreams to life. Everywhere he looks around his Philadelphia home, paintings and drawings greet him from the walls. Phil listens to his parents discuss artists at the dinner table. He watches his big sister splatter canvases with creativity. He plays basketball with his buddies and carries a sketchbook around his neighborhood. Buildings, roses, people passing on the street, Phil sees them all and draws clear and strong. But at school, what Phil sees is out of focus. Letters on the page don't spring to life as words. His mom, a teacher, tries her best to help him. M, M, A, M, M, man. What does it say, she asks. Phil lowers his head and his heart sinks. His big brother and sister are great students. His dad is a su successful businessman. Why can't he see how to read? Someone in his family shows him a strength he holds inside. His pop-pop, Alan Randall Freelon, is an educator at Harlem Renaissance Painter. In his studio, Phil sees pastel homes by harbors, fishermen, still wet canvases with palettes with oily colors dare him to touch. There's a picture of his pop pop. One day, the two of them walk through the woods. Phil darts this way and that until pop pop tells him to sit by his side on a log. Close your eyes and listen, pop pop says. Phil hears birds crooning and squirrels scampering across crunchy leaves. He smells the fragrance of earth. He feels the breeze dance across his honey skin. Phil is seeing the world with an artist's inner eye. If you see, you can see they have their eyes closed. Foundation, as Phil grows older, his special sight deepens. His thoughts have color, shape, and form. Math and science fill him up like art. Phil can see strings of numbers and formulas in his mind. Reading takes longer to master. His mom and sister recite Shakespeare for fun. But Phil freezes when called to read aloud in class. He struggles to find joy in books until he re realizes that words can create images too. In time, those story portraits show him new worlds just like art. Phil explores different media. He doesn't just draw. He writes essays and poems. He can see the shape of a car inside a block of balsa wood. He builds using his senses to create. When his father gifts him models after business trips, Phil spreads pieces of battleships cars and planes out like a puzzle. He doesn't need directions to know where each piece should go. Soon his paintings, sculptures, and models begin to reflect the times. 
He carves African mask from I bars of ivory soap. Black is beautiful. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. They're not just mottos. They're beliefs that live in him. His father's stories are part of him, too. Stories of having to sleep in different southern hotel than his white colleagues. Stories of being the only black man in airports except for porters. Stories of being mistaken for an athlete instead of a businessman. In his proud black neighborhood, Phil sees people who never make the news. His neighbors are doctors, suit and tie wearing detectives. Teachers, friends learn to play concert piano. Bill hears a chorus around the nation shouting for justice and equality. When his father is at the march on Washington, Phil watches the TV and feels like he's there with his dad soaking in Dr. King's dream. F frame. At Central High School, Phil signs up for a drafting class when the teacher asks the students to look at the front of a machine and draw the other three sides. Phil gazes deep inside and can see what's out of view. He becomes the top student in his art and drafting classes. He wins industrial design competitions. An idea emerges until it becomes clear as a snapshot. Phil wants to be an architect, someone who designs buildings, a perfect blend of his strengths in art, math, and science. At Hampton University, a historically black college, Phil aces every architecture lesson, tutoring classmates who need help. And later, when he attends North Carolina State University School of Architecture, he soars too. But he wonders why they never study anything created by people who look like him. On his own, he discovers Black architects who design celebrity homes and a university chapel. He reads about African and Islamic builders in classes left out. He thinks about artists like his pop-pop, whose work made unsung people and places seen. One summer, while Phil's still a student, he takes the lead in designing a solar greenhouse in Virginia. As the structure grows and glistens, a dream begins to take shape. Phil wants to make the world better through what he creates. Form. As an architect, Phil turns wishes into buildings with doors and windows, plumbing and lights. By the time he founds his own firm in North Carolina, his mission is clear. He will not design prisons or casinos. Phil creates schools, libraries, bus stations, museums, places that help people, that show everyday beauty, that celebrate heritage and fill hearts with joy. And here are some of the things that he designed. Tenley Friendship Neighborhood Library in Washington, D.C. Durham Station Transfer Center in Durham, North Carolina. Reginald F. Lewis Museum of Maryland African American History and Cultural Culture in Baltimore, Maryland. The Nation Center for Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta, Georgia. Then one day, Phil hears about a dream imagined decades before he was born. In 1915, 50 years after the end of, civil, of the Civil War, people dreamed of a na national memorial to honor Black soldiers and sailors. 
That dream grew until they could see a museum that would rise like a phoenix on the Washington Mall. A museum to honor Black achievement. A museum to show Black resilience, strength, and pride. For decades, that dream was deferred, but in 2003, a national commission makes it come true. A museum will be created that documents Black history, life, and culture. Phil and architects around the world want to design it. Dream. Years later, the commission chooses Phil and, ar and architect Max Bond to create a preliminary master plan. Four months they work together, making a, a guide to future spaces and exhibits. In 2008, an international competition is announced. The winning team will get to design and build the museum. For this project, Phil and Max need a dream team. They want to include someone whose work is known beyond the United States. Phil and Max meet with David Adjay, an acclaimed British, sorry, get gun, oh, sorry, Ghanaian, Ghanaian architecture, architect. As the men talk, they watch one another's body language. Can they unite? The team clicks. Phil will lead architects, coordinating all aspects of the complex project. David will be lead designer, coming up with ideas in collaboration with the team. They have just six days to plan a dream passed down for generations. They huddle around tables, talk on phones for hours, send countless emails, and dig deep. They look, they see a structure shaped like a crown, worn by African kings. They see ironwork patterns forged by black artisans. They see a porch of welcome. And they listen, they hear the ocean, rocking ships of stolen people. They hear footsteps marching for freedom and justice. They hear voices of unsung, unsung heroes waiting for their day. In front of the judges for a competition, Phil tells the story of the dream they want to build. He feels Pop Pop, his father and mother, his family with him. His models stand proudly. His word pictures light up the room. Soon, Phil hears the word that makes his heart sing. Yes! Their next mission is to get the museum open before Barack Obama, the first Black president, leaves office. In 2016, a century after the dream was born, they deliver. And there's a picture of the building. In the contemplative court, Phil reads Dr. King's words. Until justice runs down like water and righteousness, like a mighty stream, he closes his eyes and smells the moisture of falling water listens to the peaceful sound the museum rises near where his father once stood as dr king shared his dream phil thinks of pop pop who taught him to see like an artist his parents who encourage him to create and imagine he thinks of how every experience led him to this moment phil freelon the kid artist from philly has become a builder of dreams We are determined to work and fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Martin Luther King Jr., 1955. All right.
the end of the story has a little bit at the end and you can see the building there with him in the picture and this is his family there's a picture of him okay growing up i didn't know any architects i was drawn to the arts and the talent that i displayed as a child was encouraged and nurtured by my family when I discovered architecture in high school, I realized that art and creativity could be used to create buildings. Over time, I learned about the achievements of African-American architects, including Julian Abel and Paul Revere Williams. I was inspired. Coming of age during the height of the civil rights movement, I felt compelled to contribute in some way to the struggle for justice. As my career as an architect evolved, I continually saw opportunities to bring my design skills into alignment with my desire to make positive contributions to my community and beyond. This is a really fun book, really good stuff. Um, I'm happy to read to you. I hope you have a great afternoon.